Welcome to Infographics with Canva. My name is Danny K. Johnson. I am with the Digital Scholarship Commons of the UVic Libraries. Today we're going to talk about why make an infographic, how to plan your infographic, spotting the infographic mistakes, and telling your story in a concise and compelling way, and then going into some hands-on activities. So why make an infographic? One reason is that a picture, as they say, is worth a thousand words. Infographics have the ability to dissect and highlight important aspects of a complex subject and sustain the attention of readers while doing so. It can be a lot to take in a whole bunch of data, but having the visuals of an infographic can draw people in and keep them curious about all the different numbers and information and especially when there's eye-catching things going on and there can be that linking in between the data that makes it more personal. This infographic about plastic breakdown in the ocean is a great example of something that draws you in with empathy about these sea creatures in a, a subject that is very heavy but is also stimulates curiosity and is very visually interesting and makes you want to read more as you look through it and can identify with so many of the different aspects of it. Visuals help readers process the content more efficiently. Making infographics can help you anchor your story in the audience's memory. Having these different color cues to tie through this different timeline about the Beatles it helps work through the different timeline, the little um, cues and the notes as you go through the story. Um, there's so many different details going on here. And just even thinking about anchoring the story in the audience's memory, um, I think about a personal example for me was in grade school, um, elementary school, learning about the months of the year through a poster that was laid out very much like um, an infographic before I'd ever heard of the word infographic. And it had the months of the year laid out in a circle with January in the upper left corner in icy, icy blue, almost white. And um, I remember March being in light green and, you know, spring went into, you know, yellow, like April was, I think, yellow and summer um, got more yellow and golden and fall was more orangey tones and browns and winters were blues and it kind of went through the year in these colors and it had facts and illustrations that had to do with the seasons. And, you know, it had the, the poem in the middle about 30 days, half September, April, June, and November, and so on. And had all the months with their dates in them. And um, I learned about the months of the year with that poster. And to this day, decades later, when I think about what time of the year it is, I still visualize the year in that circle. And I still picture the months of the year in those colors. And it's ha it had such a impact on how I think about the year and I think about the time of the year. And that's how much of an anchor, you know, I think of that word anchor and how much an infographic can have an impact on, um, on how we connect to data. They're great for sharing. A well-crafted crafted infographic is much more likely to have a broad public impact than a research paper. So you can do both. Write your ac academic paper or article and then create an infographic that links back to your paper. This also facilitates public scholarship via sharing in social media platforms that privilege images. The algorithm um, with social media favors images. It really loves images. And you see this in the way that memes are populated and photos are populated on social media. 
So if you create an infographic and you share it with a link back to your paper, it's much more likely to gain traction. And then people who are really interested can then go back and read your full paper. So planning an infographic. Planning an infographic is like planning to build a house. You wouldn't start building a house without creating a plan on how large you want the house to be, where all the walls and doors and windows go. And the same thing applies with an infographic. Upfront planning can help us to avoid design problems. Does this door work? Yes. Is it ideal? No. So a little bit of work beforehand would have solved a lot of work later. So planning an infographic, it helps to start with pen and paper to sketch out important points and doodle down some possible graphics before starting to work with Canva. So if you have, we actually have a worksheet in the whole lesson plan that has ways where you can sit down with your research paper or your document that you're using to build the infographic and it has spaces where you distill down all your points that you want to cover in the infographic and um, some ideas for graphics and that sort of thing and so you can work through that after this workshop and uh, it'll help you kind of break that down before you start building your work your infographic so some examples of infographics gone wrong so if we look at this there's a couple things going on here. The main thing here is that the numbers don't add up to 100%, and this can confuse readers. Um, so one possible reason why that the numbers wouldn't add up to 100% is that people could select more than one answer to the question in the survey. So a better way to have displayed this would have been something like, a bar graph or something like that. Pie charts are really good for showing 100%. So they could have used a different design and caused less confusion. So here, this should have been a pie chart because the percentages add up to 100%. But it's still okay. The positive side is they make use of some simple graphics that illustrate what each category is, which is nice and eye catching. Something that could have been done a little better would have been that typically bar charts are set up in ascending or descending order so that it's easier to compare um, how things stack up side by side. So if you have some data, which type of chart should you use? Generally speaking, you would use, if you're comparing values, a bar chart or a line chart. Um, if you want to show the individual parts that make up a whole uh, pie chart or stacked bar and stacked column, if you want to understand how the data is distributed, you could use a scatter plot or a line chart or a bar chart. If you want to analyze trends, a line chart and a bar chart. If you want to comprehend the relationship between data sets, line chart, scatter plot, and the bottle charts are good. So in this one, it's a mess. There's too much information. It's not understand, easy to understand at a glance. If you have any color deficiency issues, trying to follow the differences between these different colors would be awful. Eliminating some of these dates would have cleared this up. Trying to distill down to the most important information would have helped out a lot. It's just, it's very cluttered. This is it's, it's just too much for people to try to follow along to. They could have probably got some points across by just focusing on a couple specific impactful dates, and that would have done the job. So there's so much to say about this example. It's, it's got our example here. You've got Facebook, the logo, and then Facebook in text. LinkedIn and MySpace logos, and then LinkedIn and MySpace text. This creates unnecessary clutter in redundancy, which you don't have space for in an infographic. You've also got the use of things like the Facebook and Twitter logo here, but then this version of the Facebook logo and this version of the Twitter logo here. You have this logo here, which is not going to be familiar to a lot of 
viewers of this infographic, then you've got timelines that don't visually line up. So you've got 2013 here, and this visual of this triangle here draws the eye along with these lines down to here. In 2013 and 2010, how do they line up? And then out here, 2012, 2003, 2004, how do these timelines on the outside here match up to the timeline here? It becomes a confusing wheel within a wheel and it's easy for someone trying to understand this data to get lost here. So I think they were trying to be creative and lost the plot somewhere in there. It's possible if they had created two separate charts within the same infographic, they could have served themselves better. Infographics tell stories. You wanna make it eye-catching and make sure the important data isn't lost in the design and make sure the design is suitable for the medium you intend to use. Is it a paper poster? Is it a Facebook post or an Instagram story? These are the two examples of the activities that we will be doing in this workshop. So what is Canva? Canva is web-based and works like Google Docs, but for layout and design elements. It auto saves your work so that you can work across multiple computers and collaborate with teammates. Canva has a free and a premium tier, and this workshop goes over how to utilize the free tools within Canva. And even in the free side of Canva, there are options to use pay-as-you-go elements, such as clip art and photos, but they aren't necessary to design excellent work within the software. Canva's done most of the work for you. They've already got wonderful templates where you can just use everything that's there and just replace the text or replace the graphics to work with how you want it. So, you know, a tip here is that infographics generally need to cram a lot of information into a small space and having matching elements reduces clutter and increases visual harmony. And this allows the data to shine through. So you really want to have matching design elements to have a cohesive infographic. If you click on a clip art within a search, it'll bring up recommendations of similar style elements. And sometimes these are by the same designer. And then many of these clip art objects allow you to change their colors. You can use the design templates in Canva as inspiration, but feel free to change them. The design on the left is a Canva template and the design on the right is the same template that has been altered to suit our uses. The Canva templates allow the elements to move around and even have their colors change to custom colors. And these are also examples of how having cohesive design elements and clip art elements create a cohesive whole. So you can see here how in each of these infographics, all of the clip art matches and works together. And that helps keep them look unified and professional. And so that's something I highly recommend when you're designing your infographic. And one more thing I'll mention is if you need to have maps that show data within your infographic, another tool that's not Canva, but is similar to Canva is called PicoChart. And PicoChart has maps as something that's built into them. So it works very similar to Canva. So that's something else that you can try that's just outside of this workshop. So from here on, you can jump in back into the lesson plan and work your way through the hands-on activities. And as always, if you have any questions or need a hand, feel free to drop us an email and ask us a question and we're happy to help.